Hello again Year 11 and today we are going to be looking at texture wrapping and painting our Thor hammer. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be using Maya again as well as a range of two other softwares, one for painting and one for a web application to access the painting. Now for that you're going to follow the instructions given in class and on Google Classroom to access it. It's a free trial software so you have 30 days to use it. However, if that time runs out, what I want you to do is create a alternative account or use an alternative email to get access to it again. It's really good for adding textures and it saves us so much time. Using the inbuilt systems often is very time consuming and general and it really is time consuming. So using a dedicated texture mapping software, it usually has a lot of shortcuts and the programming is specifically designed to make it as easy as possible. So what we're going to do to start with this is we are going to go to file in our Maya file. We're going to make sure actually our object is selected in the process. File, export selection, and with this export selection, Pause, rewind. Now, the first thing we're gonna do with this is we have our Maya document open. We're gonna click on it and we are gonna go to UV menu up here, all right? UVs are the texture or the words that represent the texture. Currently we have that shader on, which is the gray color on our Thor hammer. Right now I wanna to go to UV editor and we're gonna try and establish Make sure it's selected guys. Try and establish our UVs. Now we have it as a square shape right now, which really makes it tricky to understand what's going on. So I'm gonna to go to create and go to automatic. And usually this works really well to give us a breakdown of the shape to all the different areas. Now this is perfect for what we need. Okay, if it does look a bit more funky than that, there are other ways we can do uh, camera face, different angles, as well as trying to use the cut and sew options here, which allow us to cut and sew different sections of the wireframe out to make our UVs. But this is perfect for what we need now. So I'm gonna close that, it's gonna save automatically. I'm then gonna go back to object mode and I'm gonna click our model. Now, what we're gonna do now is, of course, go to file, and this time we're not doing save as, we're going to go to export selection with our model selected. We're gonna put it into our file of scenes. I'm gonna be using a file name that I've been already using before, but this time I'm gonna use it too. So I'm calling it Thor Hammer Texture underscore 002, and I'm saving it not as a Maya file, but as a FBX export file, which is a generic type of model file, which you can use for 3D printers, for example. Now I'm going to click export selection. It's going to take a couple seconds. Now for the next part, of course, we need the softwares that is going to be found in Google Classroom as links for the free softwares that you're going to need to sign up for. And also I'll instruct this further in class. So one of those free softwares is going to be the Substance Painter. And you're going to find that with the Substance Launcher. So you download the launcher, as a DMG, you install that, and then you're gonna to have to download this subsequent folder as Substance Painter. Now that, what that does is it gives us two panels, a 3D view and a UV mode view. It gives us a layers option, just like Photoshop and Maya, some tools to actually interact with our shapes and UVs, and a long list of materials, which can include woods or to leathers, to wools, to metals, to skin colors and skin tones, uh, to many, many different things. And it's gonna really help us. Oh, there's a human face there as well. Uh, so it's gonna really help us demonstrate what we need to do. So the first thing we're gonna do with this one is we're gonna import ours using new, firstly, setting up our scene, make sure to it's on B, PBR, Metallic Roughness, Algorithmic. We're gonna to go to Select and we're gonna select our file. We're then going to go to Resolution. Make sure this is at least 2000 HD resolution. Now, 
Now for this, we're going to make sure that a few things are there. We are going to see that import camera can be on or off. Auto unwrapping is a must. We're going to go to options, make sure that it is going to generate only missing data, generate only missing data, generate only missing data. Now, no margins, that's perfect. And we are going to import. So that is going to be perfect for us. We are going to click OK. And you're going to see a 3D view. And we're going to see that unwrapped view that we created in Maya before. Now, Substance Painter allows us to manipulate the area just like we do in Maya using scrollers with the mouse and the option key and dragging middle mouse button or left mouse button to rotate. What's perfect about this is it breaks it down into the clear defined shapes that we're going to use to paint the surfaces and make it nice and easy. Now the way I'm going to do this is a very quick method which is going to make it easy to break down a single mesh model into multiple colors. The first thing I'm going to do is go into the layer panel and create some folders. So those folders are going to be up here. The first folder I'm going to create is going to be called hammer head and the hammer head I'm going to do in one color. Now with that hammer head, okay, I'm happy to delete that original layer. Okay, and now I just have the hammer head layer. Now I want to go and find a nice metal color for the hammer's head. And I can see a bunch of different ones. We have iron brush, iron, iron shiny, Iron rough, iron raw. Pure iron looks really shiny. We even have iron diamond. So for this one, I want to make sure it's really, really shiny. And I could use some of the irons or I can even use the steel down the bottom or the titanium or the platinum. So since it's a hammer, I'm actually going to stick with the iron, but I'm going to use iron pure to make it really shiny. Now, if I drag and drop that directly to the mesh, it's going to consume the whole shape. Now, that's one way to apply it to a generic object if we want to apply it to all at once. And it actually has quite a nice shine to it already. However, I don't want to apply it to all of it. So I am going to undo that. Go back to that shiny color I want and instead drag it to the layer that I started. And that's already going to apply it. Now you might be wondering what the difference is with this. It's because we're going to mask out the areas we do not want to include. So to mask out the areas of this, I am going to select that color that I've done. I am pure. I'm going to right click and select add black mask. That add black mask is going to now make it go back to its normal shader. Now you're going to notice when I go over it in black in a moment, it's going to stay this sort of original shader color. But if I go over it in white, it will turn into a different color. So a black mask basically hides anything that I don't want visible. Black is going to be invisible and white is going to be visible. So it's going to be very tricky to do this. The normal way it actually sets up is you have to go into this tool here, which is called Polyfill. Now Polyfill basically aligns that you're going to click the polys which are the surfaces or squares with a color. Now I'm holding right click here to get this color selection up quickly. And right click is going to be white for one and black for zero. So with white selected, I can double tap different polys to start to actually paint my surface in the metal color I want to demonstrate. However, polys here is going to take quite a long time. And that's really good for small detail stuff. But for the time being, 
instead of using polys, what I'm going to do, just to show you actually heads up, black, if you select it, or the black, it takes it away because we're masking it back out. Now, poly selection is over here where I've moved my mouse. That's poly selection. We can also do tri selection and we can do mesh fill and UV chunk fill. That's the one I'm going to select now. Now, with UV chunk fill, I can go into the combined area over here and select large chunks of where I want to fill. So for this surface, I'm going to select it with a click or a click here and here. Make sure you got it on the white because I had it on black and I wasn't going to select. So that's going to select the majority of that area for me. And that area and as long as I know where my design is most of the time, it's going to select most of these areas. And I know the large majority of my design is going to have that silver color. If you need to zoom in to make sure you're selecting them, always useful. You don't want to miss up any areas. Select those areas, it makes it real quick and easy to actually enforce these colors. See, I know where I'm going because I designed this object and I know what each section will roughly be. And if I make a mistake, it's actually quite easy to fix later on, which I'll show you guys how to do. So spend a few minutes making sure you go through all these different areas to ensure that all of the surfaces that you have selected for the hammer co color area are going to be selected. Sometimes a double tap will definitely secure the choice as well. Okay, so I believe that most of that area is done for the hammer. Now a good way to check that is to shrink the sizes a little bit increase the size of the 3D view and you can deselect your UVs if it clicks into the paintbrush or something like that holding option and then panning around now I know I've missed that area now because it's not reflective and there's a few areas like those thin lines there that I've missed but majority some lines there that I've missed as well. Majority of them have been successfully completed. Now, since I know that the majority of this lower section is definitely going to be this color that I want, there's an alternative way to doing the UV fill. So instead, I'm going to click on that mask again. All right, and instead of Instead of using that UV selection, so I've got that mask on, I've clicked the color, the mask. I'm going to make sure that I have the polygon fill on. Now, instead of using that one, I'm going to go to the polyfill. Now, polyfill is going to be a bit more rough. You can make mistakes doing it this way. But since I know all the bottom layers below this section are going to need that one color, it's going to be pretty straightforward. So I'm going to drag and select that area there. And that's going to ensure me 
and all those areas I just dragged and selected are now colored correctly. Our only area that may not be colored correctly now would be the top section because I purposely avoided that area because I didn't want to impact this section here. But from what I can see, it looks like it's pretty cleanly done. There might be a few mistakes, but for the time being, that's a pretty good start. Now, we're going to add a second layer here. And we're going to go back to the Layers menu, New Folder, this folder here. Make sure that you actually selected the top layer. Okay, and go New Folder, select that one. And we're going to call this Handle. leather Now in handle leather, we're going to make this super easy. We're going to find a leather like material. See there's fabrics that you can use here. Make it easy. If we go and look for textures, skins, particles, tools, materials, we'll just scrub through a little bit more fabric, Brass, denim, knit, rust, leather, leather rough, leather soft grain. So I'm actually going to choose leather rough and I'm going to drag leather rough to the handle leather. Second thought, I don't like that color. I'm actually going to get rid of that one. I see leather bag here, which is a much darker color. I'm going to throw that one on it. I like that color better. Now, same as before, I'm going to add a black mask and that's going to get rid of the colors that is applied to the leather here. And this time, I'm going to Use that UV again. And I know the handles cover major most of this part here. So I am going to ensure that I have it on the UV select, have it on one, and double tap this one here, 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 and here. Now if I make this area a little bit smaller and go to my 3d view and have a little look around it it will make sure that I haven't missed any spot on that leather handle that tops okay because I'm going to add something to that later okay and that's perfect so I'm content with that leather handle being done. And one of the more nitty gritty parts I'm going to do now is those rings of aluminium around. Now that's going to be a little bit more tricky. To do that we are going to need a additional layer and I'm going to call this metal rings I'm then going to select a color for those metal rings I'm going to make this slightly different to the actual hammer's head so it stands out and I'm going to choose something like iron hammered 
drag it on and like we did before right click add black mask but this time instead of using the UV because these aren't on separate UVs and it's on the same line what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to do the poly selection but we're going to have to do it using the polys so a quick way to start this off and messy way unfortunately is by using that UV selection holding shift and dragging over these sections that we think we need. I'll zoom in, show you guys. Now at the end of this, what's gonna happen is basically you might have some mistakes where you've gone one or two over upwards on the side. All right, I'm just gonna do one for you guys to speed up the process. If there are mistakes or there are not any selections made in certain areas, easily fixed with this, it just makes it a lot easier to work with. And that's basically just doing individual selections. Just like there, I made a mistake. And I'll show you how to fix that in a second. Yep, two mistakes. Okay, now that we've made that bottom row selected, I can go into my three dimensional view. And since I know that these ones are mistakes, I can make sure that this is now black and mask them out so we don't see them. If we've missed large sections, because I knew we were gonna miss this section, we can also select that white and also select them individually by double tapping on them here. Do not drag click these because you're going to select the ones on the other sides as well. And then you're gonna to have to clean them up individually and it takes forever. So as you can see, we've made that first ring, but you can see that on this one here, I've gone higher. If that was intentional to your design, you can go around or you can get rid of them quite easily using the black to mask it out and keep it pretty straightforward like that. Once that's done, I'm going to do all of these, but I'm going to fast forward to the finished product to show you that. All the different rings take some time. And then I'm going to apply an additional layer to this section here. And I'm going to call that a new folder called handle underscore ends. And I'm apply again an additional metal to there. Something sort of in between. Maybe a galvanized iron. Similar to a bit to the hammer iron. And also a bit similar to the shininess of the other one. And since I know I'm going to pretty much directly use this on the both ends. I'm going to make sure it's selected in white. You can do UV selection if you like. And I'm going to select all of the end pieces using the UV selection and the poly selection.
Just need to be a bit careful you don't go over previous selected areas. Otherwise you're going to individually select those polys to fix them up later. On that last layer, I remembered I had some shapes at the top here, which link in to the actual handles. So I'm going to double tap them and make sure they're definitely selected. Now it's up to you guys to make sure you finish those silver rings, or aluminium rings, or metal rings that go up the handle of Thor's hammer and you should at the end of it have something pretty similar to looks like this. So once you have that finished product that looks pretty similar to this, we can of course adjust some of the scales of the specs of those different materials by clicking on them and adjusting their color weighting, their roughness, their sort of hardness, the metal's color a little bit, the finish, patina, there's a whole bunch of things that we can adjust. But once we've actually got that something that we similar, we like quite a bit, what we're going to do is make sure that all of those areas have no imperfections. And once you're assured in, your, in yourself that there are no imperfections, there is a few things we can do. One is go to File, Export Texture, and you're going to want to go to ensure that this is the same one we started with, PBR Metallic. We're going to make sure we save this in the right location. I'm saving this in source images and I'm going to add a subfolder here called textures and in textures this is where this one's going to belong. Make sure it's a PNG. I'm doing 8-bit and I am going to go to output my output that I'm going to choose is going to be Arnold AI. Arnold is a rendering software used in Maya. These are the files that's going to be allow us to apply to our object in Maya. It's going to make it super quick and easy. Once that's done, I'm going to go back to the settings and I am going to export this to where I've chosen to. And now it'd be a quick, easy check to see if it's where I want it. Going into my Maya folder, projects, source images, textures, and that's all the different images that we've just created for our texture. From our UVs to the colors to the shades to the roughness, all of them are used together to actually make that same texture in our software. When that's done, feel free to save all your work. Make sure it's saved so you can use it in future.
and come into Maya with your existing model. Now, we're going to select that model. We're going to right click and go down to assign new material. This is going to be called the Hypershade menu. Now your Hypershade menu can also be found in the Windows display and then you'll go to Hypershade render. Now I'm going to choose a specific type of surface here. It's inside Arnold, inside shaders, and it's going to be called AI Standard Surface. Once that's selected, I'm going to be able to see the attributes of that different selection. And if you get lost and you can't find them, you can go to Windows, Render, then you can go to Hypershade menu and you can click on the actual Hypershade that you just started. So I made this AI standard and I'm going to rename this AI standard, which will also appear here now, to Hammer Text. So in hammer text, I'm going to minimize this hypershade menu because we'll be using it later. I'm going to select the color, go into the outlook, select the file type. It's then going to give me the option to go into a folder now for image name. And inside our texture folder that we started before, I'm going to have my base colors for the color. Now, if that doesn't show up straight away, you can press 6 to show up the textures on your Maya folder. So it gives you the rough look of your starting element. Once that's done, we can scroll down a little bit and start to interact with different areas of our color. And again, if you get quite lost, Trying to find your color, you can go to the hypershade, reselect it in the hypershade menu, like I'm about to. Hammer, double tap, it'll pop up there. Minimize it again. Now we've selected the actual color, which has already been assigned, which can be seen by that symbol. I'm going to go to metalness, which I'm going to select again and go to file. Now all files can contain this. You'll notice how it turned black while it's waiting for a source image. And with this source image here,
you're going to select the image name and you're going to select the metallic. That metallic then is going to load in as the metalness for our texture. You're going to notice the color has returned. It is darker, however, when we go into the render mode, it will appear lighter. Now, as we scroll through, we can have a look at alternative and additional options, such as color balance, which also has additional options for additional files. And we're gonna go to color offset, change this one to a file And with the offset, we're going to put this as the normal file in our texture folder. So the color offset will have the normal file. Now I'm also going to select alpha is luminous and that's going to help with the lighting situation when we render. Now, while we wait for some additional file types to work, I will go into here and I'm going to go into the top section over here called Arnold. I'm going to activate something called Arnold Light and put a Sky Dome Light in. Now, this Sky Dome Light. I'm going to be able to also show or turn off the grid so it doesn't get in and to have a rough or quick rendered view of our finished shape we can click render as long as we have our settings lined up we should be able to see our rough shape now it is loading and the percentage values do go up depending on how high your performance is on your laptop this will be a process will be fast or slow. And 
This should also be remembered that this is not the full render. This is just a preview render view. So it won't be the final view of your image, but it'll show you the rough shapes and how it's going. Now, every time you make an adjustment with the color, add roughness, add shininess, add your base color, add your contrast color, have a look in the render view, and then watch the adjustments for when it should be seen when it's exported. Click stop, off, and to get a nice view, zoom in on a three-quarter view and add a render to it and then we can have a little look at how the shape and textures interact. We can see that there's some reflection here off the actual handle which is nice and we can see that it's trying really hard because we've gone zoomed in and it's now trying to do us a nice clean line render. So just hitting 50% rendered there. Taking the time to imagine that when you're doing this in an animation, every single frame in a second, which is 24 frames, needs to be rendered in the same way. at 92%, we're almost there, we're done, this image is a massive 850 megabytes, to show the clearness of the actual image in high detail. I'm pretty happy with that at this stage, I want to save that image for later, so I'm going to go file, save image, 